and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desperate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord Yahweh, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred against thy and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. Right, by the force of the sword, right? Biological warfare, chemical warfare, all manner of things. How you, how you ladies doing? Do you guys believe in God? You got a second for one Bible verse? Would you like to hear one Bible verse, sister? Be on. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, yeah, in the time that their iniquity have an end. I seen a report the other day that the government is now, they're superseding GMO food and they're, they've they added something called NR something. NRA that's within the food that can genetically modify your so quote unquote DNA or your genetics, right? That's off, that's wicked. Right? And our, and our forefathers wrote about this. Get that in Ezekiel chapter 4. In verse uh, 12 or 13, I believe. Ezekiel 4. The foul bread. 13. The book of Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. So the Lord said the children of Israel is going to eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. Right? And the word Gentile in this context ethnos, the ethnic Gentiles, the other nations and people. The foul bread going into food, man. You're eating all manner of foods that have NRA in it. Right? Something that can modify your genetics or modify your DNA. They can genetically kill you from within. Right? That's, that's laboratory one-on-one. -on -one. Things that are created in the laboratory. Things that they have done experiments on. Right? You wonder where all the missing people are. They're probably in some laboratory getting experimented on, man. Right? Learning about the next big thing that they can do to the average person in society. How right. they can manipulate them. And the Lord prophesied that this will happen in America. Jump to verse um, 4. To let you know that this is in America. Verse 4. All right, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 4. How you ladies doing? You guys believe in God? We do. You got one second for one Bible verse? Read that. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the... verse 3. Verse 3. Go over. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city. Right. And set thy face. Hey, sister, can I ask you a question? You believe in God? Can I read your Bible verse? I'm sorry, you said it again? All right, give me the um, Deuteronomy chapter. Matter of fact, give me Judges chapter two and verse uh, 11. What you know about your race in the Bible? You know what God called your race in the Bible? You asking? I'm going to show you. Judges 2 and 11. And the children of Israel. The who? The children of Israel. You was what? The children of Israel. God's chosen people, the Israelites. Read. Did evil in the sight of the Lord. They did evil in the sight of God. Right? Have we been treated fairly in America? We said we have. We've, we've been treated fairly in America. We have. Why well, gotta be an exclamation? Because, sister. You said what Bible verse? Now, that was verse one through what? No, that was, that, that was a few words of the verse. Right? Verse 14. Listen to this. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. Right? The Israelites, because they did evil to God, read. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers. Given to other races of people. Read. That spoiled them. The other races robbed them. Read. 
and he sold them. He sold the Israelites. Were we sold into slavery? I'm saying, were we yes. sold? Yes, we were. So that means we're, we're the Israelite system. You're an Israelite. That's right. And you got to come back to God before World War III so that you can get salvation, sister. I wouldn't say. I just got so saved. You saved? Yeah. That's what they taught you, you in church? To save you now? No, I can't save you now. God has to come and save you. Now. Right. Yeah, give me Matthew 24 and 13. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. Right, listen to this, sister. You too, sister. Listen to this verse. I'm listening. I gotta keep walking, man. But he that shall endure until the end. Has the end came? Yes. The end has came. All right, he that shall endure to the end. The same shall be saved. So, sister, in order for you to see, receive salvation, you have to know that you're an Israelite. You have to start keeping God's commandments and you have to have faith in the only begotten son. Right. So you got to start keeping the Sabbath day. You have to start um, wearing modest dresses. Sabbath day is on. Sabbath day is the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week, which is Friday, Sunday, and Saturday, Sunday. What do I do on those days? On that day, you worship the Lord, right? You don't buy and sell, don't work for pay. Don't cook, and you just honor the Lord. You right. cook your food before the Sabbath. As long as I'm honoring the Lord before I eat and after I eat, and all throughout the day, seven days, like I've already had, before then I'm fine, right? On, and I keep doing it. On that Sabbath day, within that 24 hour period, you just don't cook nothing on that day. Meaning you cook prior to that day. And if you didn't know that you were sacrificing, that you were really sacrificing, you didn't you need it. You cook, you couldn't do nothing until you read your Bible or read a verse. Then if I've already did it, then that was on the seventh day, I probably was like, hey. So the, so, so the Sabbath day is Saturday, sister. So on Saturday, don't cook nothing. Not even the microwave. No, not necessarily the microwave. Make you a sandwich. Make some food prior to the day before and eat it that day, sister. Huh? You said what? I can look at you doing that on another day. Well, on <laughs> Sunday you can cook. I think I'm Sunday you can cook, Monday cook, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right. You know, Friday. And what will you teach me? I'm going to eat No, eat, sister. What I'm saying is, on the Sabbath day, you have to go about that day in a particular manner. Okay? Yes, sir. When did I start it? You started right now. <laughs> Meaning, meaning on next Sabbath day, you just sandwich, some fruit, salad. You like salads? Yes, I love all this. Get you a salad, sister, on the Sabbath day. If I try it next time, I'll still hear from you in my kitchen. Well, uh, if you try it next time, the Lord will have mercy on you in the day of judgment. Right. And that's what you want. You want the Lord right. to have mercy on you in the day of judgment. Because everybody going to receive a day of judgment. And I, what's your name? Shakur. We pray that Sister Shakur receive mercy in the day of judgment. That's right. All right? I eat a sandwich. I eat a sandwich. I try my best. Yeah, and a salad, sister. Get you a salad, things of that nature. Put some chicken in it. All right? Well, what's going to happen when I get ready to do that? Well, sister, I can't tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Well, I got an answer. You got a what? Israel one day. See what that's about. Israel. When I go over there, am I coming back home? <laughs> my grandma was going to take me on vacation here, so I want to go one day because she, she passed away right before. She said, I'm going on a trip. Uh, she said, she's going on a trip to Israel. Seven. Uh Sorry. Listen to this verse. Peter 5 and 7. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. I think that's what I want. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Did you hear that? God said the end of all things is at hand. Read. Be ye therefore sober. So sister, you got to be sober minded. In your mind, you have to be able to focus. Right. In your mind, you have to be able to be sound. Be therefore what? 
Be ye therefore sober Read. and watch unto prayer. And you have to pray continually. That's the message to, to, to you, sister. Pray continually, be sober, be vigilant, be steadfast, right? Steadfast is what, when I do that, and I don't go without food, and I do that for so long, it feel like I'm dying all over again every time. Well, sister, I didn't tell you well, to no, go. No, not every time, but it did. Okay. I didn't tell you to go on a fast. I didn't Just tell you read. to not eat. What I see. Continuously pray. And okay, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, pray, that. pray, yes, pray all the time. Okay. And when you go to pray, face, try to face the east when you pray. Face the east. If you have a compass, right now the east would be considered this way. Right. Right. This would be your east, but wherever you are in the earth, just pray. And if you have the ability to have the compass and find the east, just pray towards the east. Why east? What? Because the Lord commanded us to pray towards the east, to our land. Right. Now, the name of God is Yahweh. God's name is Yahweh in the Hebrew. We spoke Hebrew before they sent us to slavery. Right. The name of Jesus Christ is Yahweh Shah. Okay? So in the day of trouble, you call on those names, sister. All right? And guess what? We love you. That's right. All right. Same travels to you. All right. And you're an Israelite, okay? That's right. All right? And don't do nothing. And remember, the Lord is watching you always. And what do I wear? You wear, on the seventh day? You wear a modest dress. I just need that. Yeah. A, a modest dress would be a dress that's not showing, showing, your, showing anything revealing. I mean, things that are things that are for your husband at home, okay? Like cleavage, like your figure, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Okay. That makes sense. All right. And you're an Israelite, okay? And we love you. All right, get home safe. All right. Uh, Psalm 73 and 1. Book of Psalm, chapter 73 and verse 1. Truly, Yahweh is good to Israel. It's good to all people. It's good, good to, to Israel. Israel. All right, read on. How y'all doing, family? All right. Y'all got one second for a Bible verse? I know you do, brother. One verse, brother. Okay, y'all praise. Give me Judges chapter 2 and verse 11. This is the book of Judges chapter 2 and verse 11. Would you by chance know the name that God gave us as a race in the Bible? You wouldn't know the race that God called us in the Bible. We're going to show you. All right, read that. And the children of Israel. Have you ever heard of the children of Israel, the Israelites? Mm -hmm. Those are God's chosen what? People. Chosen people. All right? That's a race of people in the Bible, the Israelites. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. Just like any good father would do if you do evil, a good father is going to put you on punishment or judgment, etc. Do you think that God has been had us on punishment or judgment since we've been in America? Think about it. Jump to verse 14. Verse 14. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of God, therefore what? And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. God is mad at the Israelites predicate upon what they did. Read. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers. So the judgment was they once were in God's hands, but now they're in the hands of spoilers, meaning the hands of other jurisdictions and races of people. Read. That spoiled them. And those other people spoiled them. Spoiled means robbed. Read. And he sold them. And he did what? And he, he sold, sold them. them. What does that sound like? Whose history does that sound like? Right? Where you were giving to other jurisdictions, robbed and sold. Now ask yourself, if I didn't know that was in the Bible, what else is in there that I don't know? If I didn't know my race, according to what the Bible said, what is it that I don't know? And why is it that nobody's teaching us this? What are they hiding from you? They're hiding from you who your true identity, what? who you actually are, which is the chosen people, the Israelites. That's right. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 68. Right? Deuteronomy 28, 68. 
right? Listen to this. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Now, God told, give me Deuteronomy 11 and 26 first. Deuteronomy. Right, we're going to make it short and sweet. 11 and 26. Right, this is the prophet Moses telling the Israelites something. Read that. Behold, I set before you this day Read. a blessing and a curse. A blessing and a curse. Read. A blessing. If ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God. If they keep the commandments, they'll receive blessings as a race of people. Read. Which I command you this day. Right. And a curse. And a what? And, and a, a curse. curse. Read. If ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. So this race of people, the Israelites, if they don't keep the commandments, what's going to happen to them as a race? They'll receive what? If they don't keep the commandments. Curses. Do you think we're under curses by God? Predicated upon what's happened to us over the last 500 years. Think about it. Now, what curses specifically is God going to say will happen to the Israelites? Give me Deuteronomy 28, 54. And you let me know if we're misinterpreting this verse or who fits this. Right? Read that. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 54. This is the curses that will happen if they break God's commandments. Remember that. Right? Read. So that the man that is tender among you. The man that's tender among you. Read. And very delicate. Tender and delicacy is like, hey, brother, I love that hat, man. You know, you know, beautiful family, man. You know, you need anything? We got some watermelon. You know, we got some watermelon for you if you hungry. That's tender and delicacy towards my own brother. You know what? His eye shall be evil. Toward his brother. His what? His eye shall be evil toward his brother. So if the Israelites break the commandments, no more tender and delicacy towards one another. He'll have an evil eye toward his brother. What race of people has an evil eye toward their own race? Us. What else did God say will happen? And toward the wife of his bosom. Evil toward his brother. Evil toward his wife. Read. And toward the remnant of his children. Rich what? Which he shall leave. No, he's going to stay. Which, Which he, he shall, shall leave. leave. Who's known for single parent households? This is in the Bible. This is here. It's been here. Every church got this Bible, but we didn't know that. Who is God speaking to? He can't be speaking to everybody if he's pinpointing specific things that will happen to one race of people. Go to verse 68. Verse 68. This is another thing that will happen to the Israelites if they break God's commandments. Right? Read that. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Y'all remember the story of Moses? When Moses went into Egypt, he said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Y'all remember that, right? So the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. And Moses freed them out. God said if they break the commandments, the Israelites got to go back to Egypt. Meaning, what, what do they have to go back to? Slavery. Slavery. They have to go back to slavery. How did we as a people get to America transportation-wise? I'm asking. That's a question. How do we get here? By a boat. Do you think that's in the Bible? Can't be, right? Cause we, I, ain't never, I ain't never seen it. I don't know. Right? Now, what's the name of the people that we're reading about? The Israelites. The Israelites. Read that again from the top. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. If the Israelites break the commandments, what did God say will happen? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Back into slavery again. How are they going to get there? With ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. That ain't in the Bible. With what? With, with, with ships. ships. What race of people went into slavery by way of a slave ship? You see that? Who went into slavery on slave ships? We're going to find out that the world calls them the slaves, or the African Americans, or the black man, or the colored man, or the Negro man. But guess what you're finding out? Your real name is what? The children of Israel, the Israelites. That's right. You're the people that this happened to, that you went to Egypt on a ship. Read on. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. And it's going to happen the same way it was prophesied, the same way it's written. It's literally written in the Bible. It actually happened on the earth. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Read on. Check this out. And there. When you get off the ships, this is what God said will happen when you got off. Ye shall be sold. Ye shall be what? Ye, ye shall, shall be, be sold. sold. 
Did we get sold when we got off the ships? Well, you standing on a, a landmark where we were sold at. Right. Literally. You know, I know you know about that. That's the Market Square House. So we can read the Bible and go touch landmarks that the Bible prophesied about. Right? And there you shall be sold. Now, who are we sold to? <laughs> it says, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Wow. 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 That's there. They shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For bond men Read. and bond women. And what? And no man shall buy you. And nobody is going to redeem you from this captivity that you're under. Right? You still have the same last name that they gave to you. You have a social security card, et cetera, et cetera. Right? The only way you're going to redeem yourself is by your faith in the man that died for you. Right? And by finding out who you are. That's the first step. Okay? So, according to those few verses that we read, what race did God call you in the Bible? Who are you? That's, That's right. right. We the Israelites. That's right. It's that plain, that simple. Sister, you got a little confusion on your face. No, okay, I'm just good. looking. Okay, so these are these are just visuals, images that we just bring to life because all of this is in the Bible, right? Now, how do we get out of this situation? Great question. That's a great question. Let's find out what the Lord says. So, uh, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 19 and verse 16. Many people have tried to figure out how they can save us. Martin Luther King tried it. Malcolm X tried it. Marcus Garvey tried it. A lot of people tried it. We haven't come to the complete answer of how we get out of the situation. But it was in here the whole time. So check this out. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? That I may have eternal life. Eternal life is salvation. Eternal life is when you're called a king on the earth. When you actually own something. Right now, we don't own anything. There's no such thing as a black-owned business, a black-owned company. I'm a black CEO. That, that is a fallacy. That's false. That's an ideology made up for our people to make us feel good. We don't own anything. If you got to pay taxes or get permission from somebody else to have some type of ownership. You don't even own your house or your car or anything right. or your land. So how do we get out of this situation that these people got us in? Check out what the Lord said. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? Read. There is none good but one. Right. That is God. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life. If you want to enter into everlasting life where we're respected on the earth as a people, where they know who we are, the Israelites, what do we have to do? Keep the commandments. What the Lord say? Keep, Keep the, the commandments. commandments. That's it. We broke the commandments and got shipped to America. So how we get out of this condition? By doing what the Lord told us to do to not get in this situation to begin with. Which is keep the commandments. Right. Does that make sense so far? So before y'all leave, name me three commandments. Before y'all leave. That God said. Uh, that's one. That's two. You get one in there, King. Throw one in there, brother. That's what I steal. That's what I steal. All praise to the most. All praise. Three might. Okay. We're going to give y'all three before y'all leave. Kill, honor your mother and father. No steal. Our people do that on a daily basis. Right. Daily basis, we break the commandments. Now, we're going to give you three that you may or may not know about. Right? Um, let's kick it off with the class of Leviticus 11 and 7. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine. Uh-oh. And the who? And, and the, the swine. 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 All right. Let's deal with the swine. Can we eat swine as Israelites? Nah. We're supposed to. We're not supposed to. Do we eat it? Daily. We eat it daily. This is what God said. Though he divide the hoof. Although he has a hoof. And be cloven footed. This is cloven footed. Yet he cheweth not the cud. God created the swine to not properly digest his food. That's why he can eat anything on the earth. He is what? He is unclean to you. He is unclean to the Israelite man and woman. The swine is. Read. 
of their flesh shall ye not eat. Don't you can't eat swine, read. And their carcass shall ye not touch. Read. They are unclean to you. The swine was created to be a filter for the earth. Your trash and disposable things are supposed to go to the hurdle of swine. That's what keeps the earth clean. Right. But now that those people are in rulership, they feed you the swine and take the trash and dump it in the earth, which is why the earth is out of order. So us as Israelites, we have to take back the earth by doing righteousness, what God said. Does that make sense? So we can't eat swine. No more pork on your fork. How you feel about that, brother? Not good. I know you don't feel good about it. You want to know why? Because they gave that to us in slavery. Right. As scraps. The so-called white man is your biggest enemy. He knows what keeps you in sin. The white man knows what keeps you in sin. So in slavery, what did they do? They said, we're going to give these niggas some pig ears. Right. Surely they won't do nothing with that. And what your grandma do? She seasoned it all up and did all these things and gave it to the children. Right. Next thing you know, the children love some pig ears and some pig feet and some ham. Ham is nothing but the anus of a cat, of a pig. Now we love it because that were, that's what we was given in our lowest state. Right. But in order for you to be a king and stand up strong how we were supposed to be, we got to come out of all of the low estate and vibration and spirit that we were in. Does that make sense? So we gotta we gotta do away with the swan. That's right. We gotta completely do away with it. At one point in time, that was never no type of eats or food for us. Right? Never. But now it is because we in slavery under the white man. And he tells us what to do. And he's our God. That's what happened. All right, give me Isaiah 6, 6, and 15. I know that that swine spirit is heavy on us. We love us pork chops. We love we love to, you know, to get put it on a sandwich, you know, put a little mayonnaise up there, you know, barbecue ribs, and throw the whole, the whole, throw the whole hog on the grill. The whole hog, and eat the whole thing. But check this out, what the Lord said. Read that, Isaiah 6, 6, and 15. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 66 and verse 15. They, Bring said, it up. they said the truth hurt, right? Now watch this. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. No, the Lord not coming back. The Lord will come, come with, with fire. fire. The Lord coming back with fire, right? We Everybody know that. No more water. Fire next time. The Lord will come with fire, read. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. And with his chariots like a whirlwind, read. To render his anger with fury, read. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Surely that has to be coming soon because the the earth, the earth is waxing worse and worse. They're passing uh, homosexual laws. They're passing the ABCD, EFG laws, transgender. They're doing all abominable things. So surely the Lord is about to put a stop to this. And this is what the Lord said will happen. Read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. All flesh. Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Read. They that sanctify themselves. Check this out. Those people that sanctify themselves. Read. And purify themselves. And purify themselves. In read. the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Read. Eating swine's flesh. Eating pork. Swine's flesh. Read. And the abomination and the mouth. Read. Shall be consumed together. They're going to die with the other one. Waking people on the earth. Saith, saith the who? Lord. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. So, we know it's hard, right, at first, but you can do it, brother. We don't got to eat that. All right? You can get you some lamb, brother. <laughs> She's at, oh, they tell me. Hey, hey, guess what? You can get you some lamb, you get you some chicken, right. beef, you get you some bison, right? Oxtail, right? We didn't know either. Yeah. I have an 8 4 cents, so six. See that? All praises. I ain't ate pork. All praises. So that's just one commandment, though. But you see how hard this society made it for us to just not break one commandment? That's why we're still in America. That's why we're still marching up and down the street asking for reparations. Right. Just things simple as that, man. But if we really want to revolutionize our people, if you really love yourself, right, and got a vision to see your people in a different state than what we are in and what we were taught to see, we were taught to see, uh, they predictive programmed us with the TV shows that they made us see, right? We have to bow down and shake hands to the so-called white man and 
say yes, sir, and do all these things to them. Hold the That's what they showed us, the who we are. But when we read the Bible, we find out, hold on, it's not supposed to be like this. Right. So it's on you. It's on us. That makes sense? I'm going to give you two more commands before y'all leave. Give me the book. Uh-oh. We forgot one important thing. Keep on reading all that. Numbers. I mean, uh, Leviticus. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So the Lord also said if it got fins and scales on it, you can eat that. Right. In the waters. That would be spot, trout, salmon, bass, flounders. Right? Fins and scales, same body. Make sense? Read on. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters Read. and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. That's what the Lord said. If it doesn't have fins and scales on it and it's a living thing in the waters, you're not supposed to eat that. That would be shrimp, crab, lobster, things of that nature. Right? Things that they have said is a delicacy food and things of that nature. Right? That's actually a cleansing mechanism for the earth. Why is it at the bottom of the ocean? Right? Why is these things? Right? So we can't eat that either. So if you truly want salvation and you truly want repentance, you say, okay, I see where I was in sin. I see how that makes sense after what God said. I ain't going to do that no more. And then when World War III crack off, guess what? You're going to be saved in that day. It's literally that simple. Right. Right? Now, let's get the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 13. Yeah, okay, all praises, all praises. Now, all praises. The, the message is this. Who are you? We didn't That's right. And we just got to keep the commandments in the faith. That's simple. All right, brother. What's your name, kid? Terrell. Brother Terrell, nice yes, to meet sir. you, brother. Yes, All right, all praise. You, you, you go down the line. Huh? My name's Terrell. Oh, oh.